Hello and welcome Helldivers to another Helldivers 2 news video and today we are going to cover the biggest patch in Helldivers 2 history and honestly it's kind of incredible at least on paper because there's pretty much no nerfs mostly buffs in this so let's get right into it but before we do make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel now let's go there's also something interesting they have also shared a steam page where they explain the reasoning behind their changes but i tried making a video where i read through the steam page and the patch notes and it turns out to be quite boring and the video gets way too long and i'm not gonna lie mostly i'll have the attention span of a goldfish so with that in mind let's go into this patch and there are some major areas of interest which are visible supply lines and attack origins in the galactic war, stratagem, weapon, planet and enemy balancing updates, various crash fixes, stability improvements and other updates, invite only lobby creation, the rightmost option in the lobby settings, currently only localized in English, additional languages coming in the next patch. So a short explanation at the go with the balancing which is as follows, with these balance changes we wanted to buff up some of the weaker stratagems to make them more viable and add more possibility for variety in the loadouts. We also changed a few to make them more consistent, but the goal was to keep a similar or higher power level. We are looking into the stratagems more to see if there are any other stratagems that need more buffs or changes to make them more viable. We also want to be better at explaining what our goals are with the changes. Please see the blog post for more information. And look, I've read through this a couple of times and I gotta be honest, Billstead now being the chief creative officer definitely shows and the mentality behind these changes is a very good one. First up, the AMLS 4X Rocket Sentry has a decreased spread, it prioritizes larger targets, increased target distance from 75 to 100 meters, decreased rockets per salvo from 2 to 1 to get better ammo economy, increased explosion radius from 1 meter to 4 meters, decreased explosion armor pen, explosion can no longer damage heavily armored enemies, but the projectiles still have enough armor pen to damage heavily armored targets and increase projectile damage from 200 to 300. And I gotta be honest, I have used the rocket sentries before and I was fairly happy with them, but with this change after I tried them in a recent game, I gotta say, they're pretty good. So we are starting off great. Then we have the AMG-43 machine gun sentry, which has a reduced cooldown from 180 to 120 seconds. And we've all known that the Gatling is just much much better and now this machine gun sentry will actually allow you to move around the map more and basically reposition. Then we have changes to the machine gun, Gatling, rocket, auto cannon, mortar and EMS mortar sentries which have increased durability from 0% to 80%. This does not refer to health, more it refers to actually durable parts similar to a charger's legs. Then we have the EMG-101 HMG emplacement, which has an increased rotation speed by 100%. And that's really good because you're super immobile with the HMG emplacement and now at least you can turn around much quicker. Then we have the MD-6 anti-personnel minefield, which gets an increased explosion damage from 250 to 350. Then the MD-14 incendiary mines get increased explosion damage from 150 to 210. And that's really good because the mines might actually become useful. Then something really cool, the Orbital Gatling Strike gets an increased fire rate of 25% plus, increased rounds per salvo from 30 to 60, increased armor penetration because now it can damage heavily armored enemies and a decreased cooldown from 80 to 70 seconds. But I gotta be honest, all of the Orbital Strikes are much worse than the Ego Air Strikes so I think they pretty much just need to have a 30 second cooldown across the board, you know, except for the ones which are really freaking powerful. But still, it's a good start. Then we have the Orbital Precision Strike, which has a decreased cooldown from 100 to 90 seconds and a decreased call-in time from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. So now it will be much more effective against, you know, enemies that move. Then we have the Orbital Airburst Strike, which has a decreased cooldown from 120 to 100 seconds and I don't think that's enough, but again, at least it's some sort of a start. Then we have the Ego 110mm rocket pods. While these changes may look like a straight up nerf, that is not the intention. Please see the blog post for more information. They get improved targeting, 
increased projectile armor penetration. Now it does 100% damage to heavily armored enemies instead of 50%, decreased projectile damage from 600 to 250 to compensate for the improved targeting and the extra damage from the increased AP, decreased explosion AP, explosion can no longer damage heavily armored enemies and yeah, I know this does sound like a nerf, but think about it this way, now it does 100% damage to heavily armored enemies instead of 50%, so the damage of the projectile being nerfed to 250 is kind of like it being nerfed to 500, but with the increased target acquisition, I think it evens out and it might be even a bit better. Then we have the Ego Strafing Run, which has increased uses from 3 to 4. It has also increased armor penetration and can now deal damage to heavily armored enemies, which sounds like an incredibly good buff. And it's an Ego Airstrike, so I'm not sure it needed one, but hey, people might start using it more. Then we have the GL21 Grenade Launcher, which has an increased explosion damage from 350 to 400. Let's freaking go. Then we have the MG206 Heavy Machine Gun. Increased projectile damage from 100 to 150. Increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 23% to 33%. Decreased fire rate from 450, 750 and 900 to 450, 600 and 750. Decreased reload time from 7 to 5.5 seconds and increased stagger strength. The heavy machine gun really needed this buff of a decreased reload time and now I think it's much better. I tried it out in one game and I kind of liked it. Then the MG43 machine gun which has a decreased reload time from 4 to 3.5 seconds and increased max amount of magazines from 3 to 4, awesome buff. Next up, the MG43 machine gun, the AMG43 machine gun sentry, the AG16 Gatling sentry, and the XO45 Patriot Exosuits Gatling. They get increased projectile damage from 80 to 90 and increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 7.5% to 25%, which, yeah. I think it's gonna be really good and it's going to bring these weapons into the quote-unquote meta. Then the AR-23 Liberator M105 Stalwart and AX AR-23 Guard Dog get increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 10% to 23%. The AR-23C Liberator Concussive gets increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 23% to 35%. The BR-14 Adjudicator gets increased magazine capacity from 25 to 30 and increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 10% to 20%. Next up, the AR-61 Tenderizer, which I absolutely shitted on in my review of the Polar Patriots Warbond. It gets increased projectile damage from 60 to 95. Dope. Increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 10 to 70%. Decreased ammo capacity from 35 to 30 decreased number of magazines from 10 to 8, increased stagger strength, so an overall very, I don't know, it's an interesting buff because it's kind of stabilizing in a sense. Then, the PLAS 101 Purifier, which I also shitted on, now it has an increased projectile armor penetration to be the same as the explosion and decreased explosion damage fall off. I tried it out in one game and still, the charge time is kind of a bummer, but at least now, shooting at the ground makes it much more consistent. Next up, the CB9 Explosive Crossbow. It has an increased explosion armor penetration to be the same as the projectile, increased demolition strength, and it can now destroy buckles and bot fabricator buildings. It now has the added medium armor penetration tag, and holy hell, it really needed that increase in demolition strength because it brings it on par with the leaks and it's freaking great to have it. Next up, the R36 Eruptor. It gets an increase to total damage from 420, <laughs> nice, to 570 damage per shot. It doesn't get the shrapnel back, but at least it does even more damage. Next up, the R63 Diligence. It has an increased projectile damage against durable body parts from 10% to 25%, and some enemies have durable body parts that receive only a portion of base damage from projectiles. Um, that's an interesting addition to this specific part, but okay, cool. Next up, updated recoil stance modifiers, and they are as follows. From third person standing stationary, it has just no changes, it's 100%. Then moving, it stays at 150%, so no change. Then crouching, 
stationary it gets a 50% to a 60% increase and moving from 125% to 100% and prone stationary you get from 50 down to 40% then scope standing stationary it's 100% going down to 90% rico moving 100% increase to 110% then crouching if you're standing stationary it's 75% down to 60% moving it goes down from 125% to 90% and prone it goes from 50% to 40%. So basically, in almost any situation, you will have less recoil, which is pretty freaking dope. Then for gameplay changes, removed Operation Modifier AA defenses, which reduces the stratagem slots by one. Thank you, God Almighty, you have heard my prayers. This is one of those changes that I wanted to see in the game from the very beginning. I always hated this modifier, and I'm glad to see it gone. They have also disabled the Retrieve Essential Personnel Defend Event Mission for the time being, which I'm kinda sad about because it was used for farming samples and now you cannot really do that. Then a change to Super Samples, they can now spawn on Difficulty 6. The reason for this change is that they feel that their existence only on Difficulty 7 Plus forced some players to play the game on a harder difficulty than they actually wanted to, and were comfortable to play on. Next, the Seaf Artillery Stratagem is no longer blocked by Stratagem Jammers or Ion Storms, and is available after the mission timer ends and the destroyer leaves close orbit, which makes a lot of logical sense. Enemies in melee range of the gates of the Evacuate High Value Assets mission will now attack it more consistently, added the ability to chat from in-game menus and mission loading screen, dope, updated some first-person crosshairs to improve readability, that's also pretty freaking dope. Invite-only lobbies are now supported, armors, new armor perk peak physique, plus 50% melee damage and plus 30% weapon ergonomics, then we go to planets and hazards. The spike plant is now reworked and it no longer causes bleed or stamina drain when hit by the plant explosion or spikes. Now it pops three times, sending spikes everywhere, dealing increased damage. Fire tornadoes have had their behavior change. They should no longer feel like they are actively responding to player movement and should move more randomly. While a fire tornado takes place, enemy vision is reduced, player vision is unaffected. Fire tornadoes being more random should result in more variance in situations players find themselves in. Tornadoes are significantly less likely to pile up and overlap on extraction points or objectives and will generally be a bit easier to deal with. Tremors have had their spawning tweaked to be slightly more random, they have had their epicenter size and effect range increased, these changes should result in more situations where enemies away from the player get stunned, as well as reducing how consistently the player has a tremor occurred next to them. Next up for visibility, a lot of planets have had their fog amounts tweaked to be a bit less harsh and dense to provide less fatigue from constantly fighting on planets with bad visibility. Desert planets such as Errata Prime, Chord Bay, Hellmire and similar, Highland planets such as Virilia 5, Mater Bay, Oceano and similar, artificial light sources have had their intensity rebalanced and reduced across the board, and that's in order to fix situations of lights completely blinding the player. Unexploded Hell Bombs The unexploded malfunctioning Hell Bombs that can sometimes be found on planets will now explode immediately if hit with a strong explosion or heavy weaponry. They will still have the same delay if hit by small arms fire or weaker attacks. Next up, vegetation that's large enough to slow the player now has an extra function. When inside the vegetation, Hell Divers will be harder to detect, reducing their detection range by enemies. This effect stacks with other detection reducing effects such as nighttime, being crouched or prone or things such as the scout armor passive. Also there have been added additional VFX for ion storms. Then for enemies, the acid effect applied by hunters, bug mines etc now allows you to sprint while under the effect and slows you by 30% instead of 50%. Duration has been increased from 3 to 4 seconds. These changes are intended to make it less punishing for players to be slowed 
while fighting the Terminates. Next up, Armored Enemy Balance. We have toned down the amount of heavily armored enemies like Bio Titans Chargers on higher difficulties and instead spawn more hordes of smaller enemies. The difference should be quite noticeable and the amount should be at least 30% less than before during bug breaches. We have also toned down slightly how many hooks that spawn for automatons. Our intent is to ease up on the demand of anti-tank weapons and by having more of the other enemies give a better incentive for the group to bring stratagems and weapons to take care of hordes. Patrol spawning is now back to how it worked before patch 1 300 with some slight tweaks so that levels are less empty if you are far away from the important locations with empty presence. Stunning has been changed so that medium and large sized enemies now don't get stunned as easily. This will not affect stratagems that stun and will mostly just affect how easily the pummeler can stun larger enemies. Next up changes to terminates for bio spewers and nursing spewers which now get slowed if they lose their legs. Spewer puke now applies the acid effect. Spewer puke can now only deal damage to helldivers up to 4 times per second and the helldiver cannot take damage multiple times from the same projectile. This should reduce instances where you instantly get killed by it. For Bio Titans, the Bio Titan's head is slightly less durable against weaker anti-tank weapons. It's not a large change and will mostly matter for weapons like the Railgun. The Bio Titan's puke can now only damage the Helldiver 4 times per second and the Helldiver cannot take damage multiple times from the same projectile. The damage is still very deadly, so running through the puke is not recommended. Their puke can now also be a bigger spread. Charger Behemoths will now join the battle on higher difficulties. It can now also take damage more than before. This enables us to spawn fewer chargers but still retain the difficulty. Chargers will now only show bleed out effects from the body if the bleed out state has started. It can still show bleed out effects from the mouth without having started the bleed out state. And next up changes for the automatons. The hoax scorchers flamethrower now deals less damage and cannot damage helldivers more than 4 times per second. In addition, the helldiver cannot be damaged multiple times by the same projectile. This should reduce instances where you're instantly killed by it. Then for automaton tanks, their armor value on the front has been lowered to be the same as the non-vent sections on the rear of the tank. The intent was initially that it was supposed to be more armored in the front, but the visual language did not show that. The vents on the back of the tank's turrets still have the same armor value as before, but we'll check for explosion directions correctly now. The damage of exploding automaton jump packs has been decreased by 50%, it will still set you on fire though. And finally for the Galactic War, introducing warp links, supply lines and origins of attack. Supply lines were previously not shown on the Galactic War map to reduce clutter and improve readability. However, based on the feedback from our community, we have made an implementation to show them on the map. This solution tries to maintain the general readability while still exposing this system to the players in game. You will now also be able to see which planet an attack is originating from, potentially allowing the community to stop the attack at its source. We have also updated visuals in the sector and planet info pop-ups. And then there's even so much more in the fixes section, but honestly, I am sure that 95% of you have dropped off at this point. But hey, if you're still watching, wow, you are one resilient motherfucker, bro. But also, thank you for your viewership, fam. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.